Welcome back. In Tool 5, I'm going to teach you how to properly give credit to graphic artists and font designers whose elements you incorporate into your resources, or as I like to call it, giving credit where credit is due. The first step in this process is to keep a record. As you design a resource, jot down each of the artists you have incorporated the moment you add their elements to your creation. You can always cross them off if you change your layout. The fabulous organization system I suggested to you in Tool 2 makes this easy because it allows you to store each artist's elements in a file titled with the artist's name. Once you're happy with the layout of your product, it's time to transform your sticky note list into a polished credits page. Below, I have links to both a PowerPoint version, it'll probably look a little funky unless you have the fonts I've used, and a PDF credits page that serves as a more polished example. Here are the steps I use to create that page. The first time you ever create a credits page, you will need to go through the steps of adding a text box to a blank slide. You can do this by selecting Insert, Text Box, or by using the shortcut in your toolbar. Once I've added the box, I'm going to type in the text until I have all the language that I want. Since I've created many credits pages in the past, I'm going to open up a document that already has a completed page within it. I'm going to scroll down to this document's credits page, which is all the way here at the bottom, and I'm going to copy the page from this document by right-clicking and selecting Copy. And then I'm going to hop back over to my unfinished document, click in the sidebar, right click again and paste. This saves me a lot of time because I can simply tweak what's already there rather than starting from scratch. Now I want my credits page to visually coordinate with the rest of my resource so I'm going to get rid of this border by clicking it and hitting delete or backspace on my keyboard. Then I'm going to scroll up and grab the border that I used all throughout this resource. I'm going to click on the border, right click, copy, then head back down to my credits page, right click, and paste. The border is now resting on the top layer of the page, so when I try to click to edit other elements, it's impossible because the border is covering the entire top layer. Therefore, I'm going to right click, scroll down to Arrange, and send it to the back. Or I can use my shortcut up on my toolbar to send it to the back. Now I can access the other layers on the page. First, let's talk about the text. To help boost brand consistency, I like to use the same text and layout in all of my credits pages. Therefore, I'm not going to revise any of the language I've included. You will notice that I've made some of the words blue, like click here, follow my TPT store, or visit my blog. These are called calls to action because they ask your customer to take action on something. I've made them blue so they stand out from the text around it. In Tool 5, I'm going to make those live links in my final PDF document. Now, for the most important step, adding the logos of the graphic artists I used in this resource. According to my official sticky note record, I used the following artists in this design. Bubbly Borders and More, Hello Fonts by Jen Jones, Free Scrapbooking Fonts, Teaching Tidbits and More with Jamie, and Pretty Full Designs. Looks like this is going to be easy since many of the same artists were used in the resource I grabbed this credits page from. I totally did that on purpose to save time. I do, however, need to add pretty full designs to this credits page. To do so, I'm going to head over to my product finalization and legal tools folder and open up my oh so handy list of contributors. This is where I store all the logos for each of the artists I love and a link to their store or blog. Let me sidetrack for a moment to show you how to get these logos and links. 
Some artists, like the wonderful Ashley Hughes, make things easy for you by including a logo in your product download. To get this logo into your list of contributors so it's easier to access, simply open the image, click Edit, select All, then Edit, Copy, and head back over to your list of contributors and paste the logo into the Logos column. To grab her website, I'm simply going to head over to the Teachers Pay Teachers store where I made the purchase, copy her web address, head back to my list of contributors, and paste it in my column. Not all artists are as organized as Ashley, so you may have to grab a logo from their website yourself. For example, with one of my favorite designers, Pretty Full Designs, I have to grab a logo from her store. On a Mac, I simply click Command Shift 4 simultaneously on my keyboard. As you can see, a little cross finder will pop up. I'm going to go ahead and click and drag around her logo and let go. Mac will capture that part of the screen for me like a picture. The capture may pop up automatically in preview for you or you may have to open it from your desktop. Then you can copy and add it into your list of contributors. For PC users, you'll see detailed steps for how to grab part of a screen in the link below. And sidetracking over, back to adding logos to your credits page. Since I need to add Pretty Full Designs logo to my credits, I'm going to select her logo from my list of contributors, right click, copy, open up my credits page, right click, and paste. Now I need to adjust everything so it looks balanced on the page. And voila! I have my credits page formatted. Now I'm going to save my document and then I'm going to save it again but this time as a PDF. That way in the next tutorial I can show you how to make these logos into live links that connect back to each of the artist's store. When you're first starting out you'll probably find it's fairly time consuming to get your system for creating essential pages like this set up and running to a high level of efficiency. Although doing so is a bit tedious at first, don't feel discouraged. Once you have your system up and running, and you've done this a few times, you'll be able to do everything I just showed you in a few short minutes. One of the biggest time savers is creating a list of contributors. You can create your own from scratch or use the link below to access the starter document. When you're ready for the next step, Watch Tool 5 where I'll teach you how to embed links into your PDF documents so your credit page, or any page of your resources, becomes interactive.